1943, Claude Newman was waiting execution on death row in a Mississippi prison. One day, walking along, he saw something hanging around the neck of another inmate. So he asked, what's that? The inmate ripped the chain and the metal off of his neck, threw it on the floor and said, you can have it. Claude knelt down, picked up the little trinket, looked at it and put it around his neck. And from that day forward, he wore it. He didn't have any idea that this small jester was about to completely change his life. That night, he was astonished with a vision or a dream of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And in it, she told him, Claude, do you wish to become my son? And do you want me to be your mother? Then ask for a Catholic priest. Claude woke up with a start and shouted, a ghost, a ghost, get me a Catholic priest. And so the guards and wardens were shocked, but they called for a priest. And that's when Father Robert O'Leary started to visit Claude. When he came and heard Claude's story, he was quite amazed. He realized throughout the conversation that Claude was rather illiterate when it came to things about religion. So Father O'Leary started to instruct Claude in the Catholic faith. Well, these catechism lessons became rather popular and four other prison inmates joined in week after week. On one particular occasion, Father O'Leary started to give a catechism lesson about confession. And Claude jumped up in his seat and said, I know all about that one, because the lady told me that when we confess our sins to the priest, we're not really talking to the priest, we're actually speaking to God, and it is God who forgives us. Well, Father O'Leary was a bit taken back and so were the other inmates with a look of surprise. And then Claude, seeing their astonishment, said, Oh, sorry, sorry, I, I didn't mean to blurt it out. Father O'Leary said, Claude, none of us are upset with you having blurted out. In, in fact, it's wonderful to see that you already so know so much about the sacrament of confession. And then Father O'Leary asked Claude, Have you seen the lady again? Claude called Father O'Leary aside and said, Father, the lady told me that if you doubted me or started to question me, I was supposed to tell you that when you were in Holland in 1940, laying in that ditch, you made a vow to her and she's still waiting for you to keep it. Well, with that, Father O'Leary realized that this was for real. Because indeed, when he had been in World War II in Holland, he had made a promise to the Blessed Virgin Mary that if she allowed him to survive the war and help him come through alive, that he would build a church for her under her invocation and in honor of the Immaculate Conception. That church still stands today in Clarksdale, Mississippi, where you can go visit on pilgrimage. Well, back to the story. So Father O'Leary was surprised with this. And when he and Claude went back and joined the other inmates for their catechism lesson, Claude said, don't worry and don't fear when you go to confession because you're talking to God. The lady told me that the priest is a little bit like a telephone. When we talk in confession, when we confess our, confess our sins, we are confessing to God through the priest. And in confession, God speaks to us through the priest. Well, Father O'Leary was ama amazed with how much Claude actually knew. As time went on, Claude grew and grew in his faith. And in January 1944, he was baptized. His execution was set for February. Well, as it came down to the time, Father O'Leary prepared Claude more and more. 
On the day of his execution, Father O'Leary was there with Claude consoling him and preparing him spiritually, mentally, and emotionally for what was about to take place. When all of a sudden, the sheriff came running in and said, I have great news. The governor of Mississippi has issued a two-week stay on your execution. And with that, Claude burst into tears. This astonished the sheriff. He had never seen a reaction like this from an inmate. And Claude said, Father, why, why has God made me live longer? What have I done wrong in the past few weeks whereby I have to stay for, here for two more weeks? If you had seen the face of the lady, you too would not want to live for one more day without her. What have I done wrong, Father? Well, Father O'Leary was inspired and quickly said, Claude, you know James Hughes and you know how much he hates the Catholic faith. In fact, he also hates you. Poor man, even though he's a Catholic. Offer up your disappointment and the, your prayers and sacrifices during the next two weeks for the conversion and the salvation of James Hughes. Well, with that, Claude gained courage and resolved to do exactly this. Two weeks later, when his execution occurred, Father O'Leary commented, as well as the warden and the guards, that they had never seen anyone go to their death in the electric chair with more joy and more happiness than Claude Newman. A little while later, James Hughes also was sitting in the electric chair for his execution. He was blaspheming with anger and violence, swearing, cursing, rejecting any attempt to provide him spiritual solace. After a while, James Hughes looked into the corner of the room and after a moment shouted, get me a Catholic priest. Well, everyone was absolutely astonished with this complete change, a 180 degree turnaround. Catholic priest came, heard conf James's confession, gave him absolution, and now he was ready to die in the grace of the Lord. When he was asked before his death, why the change? He explained that Claude Newman had appeared in the corner with a beautiful lady standing behind him with her hands on his shoulders. And at that moment, Claude had asked the lady to show James a glimpse of a vision of hell so he would know where unrepented sinners go when they die. And because of that, James converted. With that small gesture of putting that medal around his neck, that medal known as the Miraculous Medal, a medal that has that name because of the multitude of miracles that have occurred through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary because of devotion to this Miraculous Medal. Claude was one of those miracles, as well as the salvation of many of the inmates who followed Claude's example. If you've enjoyed this story and would like to hear all the wonderful stories that we publish here at Passionate Catholic, click on the subscribe button below and don't miss out on any of the stories by the Catholic Storyteller at Passionate Catholic. If you're looking to take the next step, if you want to grow in your spiritual life, not just to know more, but to become inflamed and enkindled with greater love for our Lord Jesus Christ and for the Blessed Virgin Mary, visit us at passionatecatholic.net. Until next time, Jesus and Mary, get us there.